it doesn't really matter uh, where you are or what kind of farming you're doing. Water. Water, water, water. Water is the most important thing on any farm. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you've got to have it. Uh, you've got to have it relatively quickly. It's got to be available. So we, uh, we spent some time uh, this year upgrading our uh, water system here. I'll walk you through the details. Uh, so many folks try and farm on paper, right? You get the paper out, you run the numbers, you plan this, you plan that. There's paper planning and then there's real world. And you really, I've learned uh, over the past few years, you really just have to step out and you have to try something and do it. And you know, uh, many times we'll fail. Um, but it's not a failure if you keep going because uh, you'll improve on um, what you've done. You'll refine that. And then eventually you end up with a system that works. You know, last year we were using, we were using garden hose. We were coming from our elevated tanks and just running garden hose on top of the ground. And it worked, it worked. Um, you know, livestock had water, uh, but some of the drawbacks, livestock stepping on hoses, the hoses breaking, the sun, you know, you've, most of the time you've got a dark colored garden hose, it's gonna heat up in the sun. So the livestock get hot water. Uh, and then you've got the, all of the health issues when livestock drink hot water, not so much the cows, but the sheep, you know, the urinary stuff that they can get with hot water. So we're bleeding the line, you know, a time or two a day. It's, it's all labor. It's all labor. And uh, so this year we are going to do something a little bit different and uh, walk you around a several day process here and show you our idea. Probably going to be one of the best. Uh, for the grazing season or one of the worst. Time will tell. I decided to go with one inch HDPE pipe for this project. We went through a company called Geo Hydro Supply, dealt with the owner there named Greg Beach. I'd highly recommend them. Small business, uh, took great care of us. We did go and pick this pipe up. Uh, super stoked. It's got a 50 year warranty. One of my favorite tools for the pasture uh, in the homestead. Uh, this is the Wilton Thin Line Spade. We got the biggest size, uh, but I do think we go across, uh, is it about a foot maybe? And uh, yeah, you know, comes to a point here at the end. Uh, nice handle, everything's welded together. Um, this thing is great for trenching. You know, not you're not going to run winter water lines with this, okay? Because they need to be deep. But if you want to do shallow stuff, especially thinner material, wire, uh, you know, phone line, uh, internet cord, whatever, uh, this this thing is awesome. We're trying to install. You know, last year we used garden hose, and uh, you know it worked. Uh, hooked our hoses up to our elevated tanks in the barn and um, you know, had a float valve on our, our water out in the pasture. It worked great. What I wanna do this year is we're burying water line. Uh, it's a one inch line and uh, we're just burying this from our tanks and we're taking it out and we're setting up hookup stations um, for putting one for every four paddocks as we go. So we're going to do, uh, th the idea is to do three of these hookup stations. We'll have nice, cool water, not just that, but the livestock, um, they're not gonna be stepping on hoses, right? Puncturing garden hoses. Uh, you know, garden hoses can be really, really nice, flexible. You know, you can run them on top of the ground wherever you want, but uh, we're just to the point where uh, um, our flirt is using enough water now where uh, we, we need something a little more permanent. That'll save us some labor throughout the season. We're not gonna run this line any deeper than six to eight inches. Uh, we, we don't use this water line in the winter time, so there's no reason to bury this. Otherwise, I'd rent a trencher. And you know, you're not gonna rent a trencher uh, to get pipe just under the ground. That doesn't make any sense. We would not dare uh, try to use this thing uh, come July or August. That would be an absolute nightmare, backbreaker. Um, you know, the reason this is uh, working out uh, right now is because the ground is so soft here in the spring. 
I mean, you're just cutting through butter here. It's uh, just kind of an art there to find in the right, the right time of the year to do this. And then the other thing too, is we're trying to keep this uh, right, right snug, uh, close to our electric line here. Cause I don't want a whole lot of hoof uh, uh, traffic or pressure on this. Um, so, you know, being this close to the uh, electric line should, should help us out quite a bit. I really would like to get these tanks up just a little bit higher. We've got about four to five PSI on the lines. Everything drains down here to this manifold. Um, I can send water to several different places on these, uh, you know, these lines that are buried here. So that's been nice. The other thing is um, this is um, south. So the sun coming this way, we are out of the sun, but you can see there, I thought it would be a brainy idea uh, to put sight glasses in the front so I could very easily walk in the barn and see what my level was. Uh, that was kind of dumb. Yeah, because looking at this, uh, you can see the algae that's in there and there really is no great way to get in there to clean those now. <laughs> So I'll probably end up putting uh, some unions at the top there. I, you know, can pop those off. Got a couple vents up there now, but pop those off and, and clean these, flush it out. But other than that, you know, maybe having the tanks painted black, got a little bit more algae on the outside of that tank there than this one here. During the season, we're going through water so fast uh, that that helps as well. One other thing, we're gonna try and dose apple cider vinegar this year. And I've heard that helps to keep keep lines cleaned out. But the, another advantage to this setup is you know exactly how many gallons you've got in here. And so if you wanna if you wanna dose it, you know, put something in the in the water like uh, cider vinegar, uh, you know, you know exactly how much to add. We would take a gas powered pump back to this well, hook up to the lines that we buried, and we used that most of the, of the year last year. You know, we've got about a, a week's worth of supply on two IBC tote tanks. That lasts about a week for all of our all of our animals out here, cattle and sheep. And so, you know, my thinking is, well, let's get this windmill pumping and just circulate water through those tanks um, all the time. We'll have a we'll have a point of entrance before the tanks float valves, so that when it closes, you know, we're not actually circulating tank water, but just circulating through the lines so we don't uh, contaminate that well. But, um, you know, I'm thinking the wind, the wind will blow here at least, most of the time, more than once a week, but at least once a week, and I'm hoping to keep those tanks topped off. Uh, that would be sweet, right? No electric, you know, no anything but the wind, uh, keeping our water tanks full. I got our first, uh test on the buried water line here we uh, here's how we terminated we put a cap on the end and uh, we've got our you got a riser there yeah okay but uh, you know I'm looking this over guys and um, you guys did a good job I don't see any leaks yeah so these are uh, fittings again from PowerFlex um, just Buried the line with the trencher. Yeah, there's our riser. That's gonna snap right in. And when he snaps that in, we should get water coming out. Uh, I heard the I heard the pressure. There you go. Lock it in. Oh uh, yeah. So I heard some pressure in the line there. We're gonna have to wait a while because that entire line coming from the barn there is gonna need to fill up. What do you guys think? <laughs> Oh, check it out, man. All right, pop that fitting out. Let's see if we work. All right, look at that. Livestock are going to be happy this year, and I am going to be... <clears throat> We're going to be in seventh heaven, not have to run garden hoses out here to, to the paddocks, huh? Nice work. Um, the only... Let me see that. Let me see that riser. Yeah, the only thing we were told is this base here to make sure you don't toss that around and scratch it up. If I get scratches on it, you'll leak. Um, and that would be important for us because we're going to be running this to a float valve and just have an automatic, uh, automatic water tanks out here. Um, okay, so this is one of the, one of the few ideas that we had that uh, looks like it's actually going to work out. <laughs> nice job, guys. If I had it to do it over again, I would probably have installed these fittings as we go. Uh, now I'm having to mark and cut these and hope that they're 
like dead on, which is kind of kind of obtuse, but that's all right. We'll make it work. Putting a T in here, and then we're gonna run this other lateral line uh, down to the corner of four four more paddocks down there. Six inch diameter PVC. Um, and this is going to go down around that pipe. You know, uh, obviously we uh, are not gonna want anything, cattle, sheep, anybody, knocking against uh, that hook up there. That would be disastrous, breaking that off. So we're gonna sink this down um, and then, you know, probably uh, cover the pipe with gravel, give us a little bit of freeze protection, not much, but a little. And um, then we do have a cap here at the end. We'll get a six inch uh, cap then to put over top that'll keep keep stuff out of your, your water, keep it dry in there, spiders, snakes, whatever. Um, I think it'll work, what do you guys think? Yeah. Let's do it. I did try and use a four inch uh starting out and this cap this cap has to open see how it pivots on the back it will not open uh with a four inch pipe so four inch is too small so be sure you go with six inch um yeah pick up some caps and uh should be set for the season thanks for watching <laughs>